Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 128 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, I'm going to clear up some confusion and answer some questions that many people have about the camera calibration tab in Lightroom. And I'm going to jump around a little bit and I want to talk about actually the bottom part first. This red primary, green primary, and blue primary. A lot of people are wondering what, you know, why is that even there and what's it do and why would you use it? Well, the best way I could explain what red, green, and blue primary sliders are about is that, to use an analogy, I guess, is let's say I went into Home Depot and I went to the paint department and I asked them for 50 different swatches of their blue paint, of their various blues. So they gave me 50 different blue swatches and I laid them all out and I brought in 10 people and I told them each individually, I says, I want you to walk up and grab the swatch that you think represents blue more than any of the other blues. And it's a good chance that each of those 10 persons would grab a different swatch because all of us have a different understanding of what a specific color may be. What is red to me might not be perfectly red to you. It's red, but it may not be what you epitome, epitomize as red. Well, the same thing kind of goes with camera manufacturers. A uh, camera manufacturer, what they think is their base blue color, let's say it's Nikon, they think this, this is a base blue blue. And we're going to judge all our other blues or rate or interpret all our other blue sh shades and blue tones off this basic blue. This is like our starting or center point. Well, Fuji might think a different blue is their starting point. And Canon might think a different shade, color, tone of blue is their starting point. So... What happens is there could be some real differences in a RAW file. So if I took a Canon camera and put it on a tripod and took a RAW image of a, of a scene and then pulled that off and put on a Nikon and took a RAW image of the same exact scene with the same exact focal length lens and just examined the unprocessed RAW files, the, the color renditions would look very different. And that's because their kind of starting point for their reds, their greens and blues are different. And that's why a lot of times you'll see a lot of studio photographers use Nikon. And you might hear them arguably say that Nikon renders skin tone better than some of the other manufacturers. And that might be, if it does, I don't know if it does, but if it does, uh, it might be because Nikon's red, what they think is their base red, and what they use to base all their other reds off of is different than what those other manufacturers are. So anyways, this big long-winded explanation is that when you open up a RAW file in Lightroom and you look at these sliders here, they're all in the center. And there may come a time where you don't like the the uh, rendering that that manufacturer is using. For example, I often think that Fuji RAW files are just too blue. They have just too much blue in them. So I think, in my opinion, at least with my Fujifilm X-T1, that the blue sometimes is just a little bit heavy-handed. So I will often come in here with this blue primary slider and just pull blue down a little bit. Now, what the thing is with these sliders in this blue, green, and red primary, it affects every pixel in the image. And that's different than if you went up to, say, the HSL slider, and we went to the saturation tab, and I take this blue slider, and I just increase blue saturation, you'll see that it's really just affecting the blue sky. It's not affecting any other pixel in the image. But when I go to the camera calibration tab and I go to the blue, blue primary section and I take the blue saturation and move that to the right, the entire image changes. And that's because every color, every pixel in the image is a mix of three colors, red, green, and blue. And when you move 
either the hue or the saturation of either of these three primary colors, you're going to affect every single pixel. That's different than the HSL tab, which will only affect what is blue or what is red or what is yellow or whatever. So that is different. And the way you could kind of test this, if you look at the histogram and you look at the bottom, and I'm going to be, pull my cursor away now. When you Just keep looking here. As I bring my cursor over the image, you'll see RGB and you'll see some percentages there. And that is kind of the mix, the mix we're getting of red, green, and blue mixed together on each pixel as I move over it. Now, if I was capable of doing it, if I could stay over exactly one pixel and then increase the blue saturation, let's say, you'd actually see the percentages change over here. But I can't, it's impossible to do that. I can't come, I can't go over a pixel, move the slider, and then go over that same exact pixel. I just can't physically do that. But that's the idea. These sliders affect the color mix, the red, green, and blue mix of every single pixel. So you really could affect the entire image more readily with these sliders or in a different way than what the HSL Color BMW tab does. So that gives you an idea what these do. So again, this was shot with the Nikon D800E. It has a certain uh, calibration of what red, green, and blue are. And if I think that maybe this is just too green, I could come in here and I could take the saturation down. Or if I don't like the hue of the green, I could change the hue also. And it will affect every single pixel. All right, so hope that made sense. That was a really wordy explanation of what these sliders do. But maybe if you think about it a little while, it will sink in. Now, moving up from that, we have this shadows tint slider. And I've talked about this in the past. This really isn't a way for you to tint the uh, shadows. It's not meant to be, at least. It's really a color correction slider. Often, with some cameras in some situations, your, the shadows in the scene will get tinted. They're often tinted magenta or green. If they're tinted green, you would take the slider and move it towards magenta, and that will help cancel out that tint that's in the shadow, that green tint. And conversely, if they're tinted, ma tinted magenta, you would move it towards green, and that will help eliminate any of that tint that might be in the shadows of your image. Now, above that, we have a drop-down that's profile, and this will only be available to you in a RAW file. It won't be available in a TIFF or a JPEG or something like that. And that is kind of the the rendition modes, for lack of a better term, kind of a generic term, rendition modes that are available in many cameras. Again, this was shot with a Nikon D800E, and right inside my Nikon D800E, I could pick one of these modes. I could pick camera landscape. And what it does, it recalibrates everything towards what it or Nikon considers a good landscape shot should look. So generally with all the manufacturers, not just Nikon, if you choose one of their landscape profiles, it will uh, increase saturation right on every color. So it's going to increase saturation it's going to make the colors richer, and it will increase contrast. So there is no contrast control in the camera calibration tab, but that's what it does. So it's setting these different um, points for what where zero contrast is, where zero blue saturation is, zero red saturation, and zero red saturation, and also might adjust the hues a little bit too, depending on the manufacturer. Neutral is everything's going to be dialed back. Uh, from that. Uh, portrait's going to increase reds and going to make the reds a little more um, towards pink, I guess, as far as a hue would be concerned. So it will help skin tones. Now, again, uh, this is going to be different for each manufacturer. And uh, these profiles are the main thing I want you to know is they're different. What you see here will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and even from camera make to camera make. This is a Nikon D800E, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six. The first one is an Adobe um, profile. So technically, there's only five Nikon profiles in here. If I go to this image, 
This was shot with a Nikon D500, so it's still a Nikon camera, but you see there's a lot more in here. So there, we have the Adobe one, then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's 11 different uh, camera profiles in here, and we could choose some monochrome ones, which weren't available in the other um, Nikon D800e. We go to the Fujifilm, and they call these... Um, these are uh, film simulation modes, that's it. And we have different ones, like they, there's a Fuji film called Provia, there's a Fuji film called Velvia, there's one called Astia. Classic Chrome is their uh, slide film. Um, and then we have some uh, other negative films, then we have some bl other black and white films. And a black and white film with a yellow filter, red filter, kind of a simulation. So totally different and again that's going to only be in a raw file it won't be in a jpeg or a tiff or anything like that this is um a canon raw file it's not mine i bought i bought some um images for like background for you know backgrounds and using skies and i could put something in here and i can't remember where i purchased them from but they were in uh they were camera raw files is what they were so um, this isn't, I just want to put a disclaimer that this isn't my image, but it has, in this case, for this Canon camera, it had camera faithful, landscape, neutral, portrait, standard. So faithful is probably their version of a standard profile. Landscape, again, will probably increase um, contrast and increase saturation. So that gives you an idea what these profiles do. And at the very top, we have the process. And all the algorithms Lightroom uses to process your images are at what Adobe calls their process engine. And they updated it three times throughout the lifespan of Lightroom. And the last update was in 2012, and that's the one I recommend you use. And the other two were in 2003, which was the original version of Lightroom, and then 2010, which came on uh, like Lightroom 3, I think, if I remember right. But then we have 2012. So if you do change your process engine, everything's going to be different about the image. The way it gets processed, even the sliders in your basic panel will change. You won't have all these sliders anymore, and they'll be named other things. So that's what that does. So typically, just leave it at 2012 or, or whatever the current process engine may be, and you'll be good to go. Um, but... I hope that made sense. That was, uh, you know, a Lightroom quick tip, but I know I talked a lot. But it gives you an idea what these sliders actually mean and what you could use them for. Typically, for me, I'll do it more if I think it's just, I don't like the blues in my raw file. I'll come in here and adjust the hue or saturation of the blue or the red or the green. Um, something like that. That's what I do. And um, some people, I don't really do this but they use it for creative purposes they want to really take out the greens let's or the blue but they want to really make a lot of green or a lot of red and you might want I've never done this but it kind of has dawned on me when I was talking about doing this or preparing this video is when you're doing portraiture you might want to experiment with these and see if you could get a different type of skin tone that you might prefer um, you know that that would be something that these sliders or I think would be effective for. So try that. Uh, I have it myself, but I plan on doing that soon. So that's it for episode 128. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.